Around here, find your peak isn't a catchphrase. It's the focus that fuels the adventure. No shortcuts, no off-season. Nothing holding you back. Vortex Nation is both a mindset and a lifestyle. A community of individuals called to breathe the rarefied air of those who understand that your limits are the only limits of the hunting, shooting, and outdoors experience. He's down right here. That's the craziest thing that's ever happened. The stories are never going to end, but that, that is the best part of the story. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, on the phone with me today, Mr. Mark Kenyon. Mark, what's up, dude? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, man. Glad to be here. Glad we're chatting. Awesome. Awesome. So I had a guy drop, drop me today and say, oh, dude, I can't record. I got done. And then he gave me his excuse, which whatever is what it is. And so I'm, and we had something scheduled today. And so I'm like, you know what? A while ago, I had a, this is a while ago. And I had a, uh, a conversation with you and it was 12 minutes, minutes with Mark Kenyon. Do you remember that? yeah okay we're shaving two minutes off of this episode so we're gonna we're gonna call it 10 minutes with mark kenyon i feel like that's a lot of pressure to be concise yeah well you're a professional you should be able to handle it by now uh, you're giving me a lot of credit man <laughs> i don't know, I don't know well, how many people have called me a professional before well our last uh, the conversation that we had and I, i'm gonna um uh, I'm going to point everybody to the wire to hunt who's listening to this. We just got off of a real conversation about the last 10 years of wired to hunt and, and, uh, and how Mark and I started the podcast and, and, uh, you know, the, the whole, how it got started, how we're different, how we're the same as far as hunting and stuff. So go, go listen to that. But just by the fact you've done something for, longer than 10 years tells me you're somewhat good at it and it's you're you're just automatically a professional at that point okay. by by that standard i will accept your uh okay your, your label but i am gonna try to railroad you and make you look bad yeah i wouldn't expect any less dan i've been doing that to you for 10 years so i guess it's time for me to get it. <laughs> and that's easy that's easy <laughs> <laughs> all right so so we're gonna go from talking about the last 10 years to our next yeah. 10 minutes 10 minutes exactly yes. it, time is relative right we uh you've seen the avengers movies haven't you i have yes and you are right yeah. so yeah all right so what all right so um we're just i, I can't tell you it's just off it's going to be off the hip but i do, do you have like a list of questions or are you no. literally just like random things that pop in your head that's, that's, how, terrifying. that's the only thing i know how to do <laughs> if i prepared for this it would just it would turn to shit and and people would listen to it because it would go it would go boring but look here it is okay okay will All you right, cut me up will you cut me off like mid talking point at 10 minutes i'll give you i'll give you overtime I will put, I'll give you an overtime buffer. Okay. But if you'll it goes shame, over you'll that. shame me though, probably. I will shame you. Okay. Yes. That's fair. instantly. Instantly. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. When I, when I hit this button, it's on. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Mark right. Kenyon, what is your favorite terrain feature to hunt? Give me a, give me a good, simple funnel that's between okay. two relatively open areas with a timber type funnel some kind of brush or timber timber and I, i'm telling you that not just because that's a good place to hunt like we all know that funnels are yeah. good places to hunt during the rut they can be good places to hunt really any time of year if it's a funnel that connects food to bedding that kind of thing but why i like that specific kind of thing where it's timber with openings on the other side is that i really like to see like i really like high visibility so give me a little timber pinch point in a grassy area in Iowa or Kansas or Nebraska or North Dakota or South Dakota or Eastern Montana where I can glass from a distance. And if it's not working right now, maybe I see something in the distance that I can adjust to. That's just yeah. fun. So it's effective and fun for my style of hunting. So that's why I picked that one. Okay. What time of year would be ideal for that, which you just described? Yeah. Give me first week of November. They're cruising. They're on the move. You can still yeah. make adjustments. Um, they're not locked down yet. Um, it's not full blown chaos. It's yep. but it's still better than usual. Okay, bucks coming through. You can pick one: bleat, grunt, 
rattle, snort, wheeze to get a buck's attention to come in. What are you doing? Snort, wheeze. Snort, wheeze. Yeah. Aggressive. Explain. Yeah. Well, you're only allowing me to pick one. So if, yep. if, if you let me pick more, I would, I would always, I always start with a grunt and then yep. I'll get like a slightly more aggressive grunt if I haven't got his attention yet. And then I will use the snort, wheeze last. But if I can only choose one, I want the snort, wheeze because I can adjust my volume of that. But usually like, you're the, it's either going to work or it's not yeah. and it's it's that like uh I don't know, it's like that that killing shot at the end you know mm -hmm. with a grunt you know it's just it, it might just not be loud enough it might not be aggressive enough to turn him it's just a little bit it's it's not aggressive enough so i'm going to throw a home or a hail mary at him and it's either going to work or it's not and that's all right it's going to give me the volume to reach out there though and if it's yeah. a mature buck which is usually what i'm after um you got a pretty darn good chance in a lot of places that that can be enough to piss them off and turn them around. So I've had a lot of situations where that was the thing that get, that got them came came come. Okay. Back. Favorite state to hunt outside of your home state of Michigan? Um, it's going to be like a prairie state. Uh, okay. I really like. I love the Great Plains. So yeah. North Dakota, Nebraska, um, you know, Eastern Montana. I realize that's more in one state, but give me a yeah. great plain state. Yeah, I love it. Uh, cause that's my favorite as well. All right. Mm -hmm. On this, on this, uh, podcast, Tony Peterson throws low blows at you on a random, like on a regular basis. Okay. <laughs> Say yes. one bad thing about Tony Peterson. Uh, he is like a little schoolgirl okay. when you get him alone. So okay. what you do, he, he tries to put on this front on the podcast that he's like this tough, know-it-all kind of really good deer hunter. But if you get him outside of that situation, for example, for work on a number of times, we've had to like share a tent for work trips. We've had to like share a hotel room before for trips to Montana. And he just wants to sit and gossip and blather on about little girly <laughs> topics for hours and hours and hours. He is a 12-year-old schoolgirl. Okay. All right. Moment of truth. Big Buck is within shooting range. Talk to me about your shot process. Yeah. Well, you know, I think in that moment when that Big Buck's coming, I'm thinking about a few things. First, I'm thinking about is when can I, you know, draw back? When can I make any final adjustments I need to make? Hopefully I'm in position already before he's in range. But if not, you're thinking through, okay, when can I make that movement? When can I draw back? When, where, and when can I get the shot itself? So I'm thinking through where's the opening, where's the tree that he's going to step behind, whatever it might be. So hopefully all that stuff's figured out. As soon as he's behind that tree or that bush or whatever, now I'm drawing back and I'm going through you know, several steps in my process where I, I say something just as I'm drawing, because these are these, these kinds of uh, phrases that I'm trying to tie to a physical action so that I stay in control of my shot. Basically think of it as like speed bumps on the road. So when I'm not in control of my shot, I'm just like speeding down the road. But if I have these little steps, it's like a speed bump that reminds me to slow down. Then another one comes slow down. So I draw back. I say, no matter what, I'm going to do this right. I draw back and I draw back. I get locked in. Um, then uh, under pressure here, I'm forgetting what my next one. Um, drop it on there. So I just drop the pin yeah. right behind the vitals. And then as soon as I'm locked in, I let it sit there for a breath or two. And then as soon as everything's ready, that's here we go. And then when I say here we go, that activates my shoulders to then pull back through. So it's a three step, three phrases that give me those speed bumps to keep me in that moment. And then just pull, 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 pull until it releases. All right, we have half time now. All right, so I hit, I hit pause. We are five minutes and forty three seconds into this this Man. high speed interview. How are you feeling so far? It goes really fast. It feels yeah, it like I, I can't believe that we're already more than halfway through. I'm feeling okay. I feel like I, I stumbled a bit there. I forgot one of my steps, so the pressure's yep. getting to me. Yep. Um, so I, I feel so as an interviewer you handled that really well you 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 identified you had a brain fart but then you overcame it thank you i uh i need as much of this cheering on as, as i can possibly get dan so please more, more of that um and then i'll also tell you that just talking about like that funnel and talking about prairie states 
gave mm-hmm. me like a little adrenaline boost. Oh, okay. So, so I'm excited. I'm like, I, I was envisioning, envisioning, like I was picturing these places, yes. and uh, that got me excited. So okay. I'm feeling good in that regard. All right. <clears throat> I got to think here. Of my 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 next question. I believe I have it. And are you ready to continue? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. You're such we a weirdo. You're such I a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> this, this You're person. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and we're starting right now. Okay. Late October or late no- November. You can't hunt the rut, but it has to be post rut or pre rut. What are you choosing? Give me late October. Why? I love that time of year because mm. the buck's testosterone is ra- rising, rising, rising. It's like almost to the bursting point. So they're really fired up, but the does aren't quite there yet. So you've got bucks uh, almost as good as it gets. Not quite there, but almost as good as it gets for buck movement. But they're still in their zone. They're still on their home turf. They're not chaotically going all over the place. They're not traveling crazy far distances, but they're moving more in daylight. So right. I really like figuring out deer in their home area and this is that time period when that knowledge comes in very useful plus they are just a little bit more active during daylight so it's a sweet spot um to see them mature deer on their feet but in a way that like your previous knowledge can inform okay now non-white tail uh, species favorite non-white tail species to hunt gotta be elk elk explain I mean, it's just like the, the, w- when it's on, mm-hmm. it is the most incredible hunting experience I've ever had. Like when you are around rutting, screaming elk, nothing compares, nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. That has been the most like adrenaline filled, wild hunting experience of my life. Um, plus it's usually in beautiful wild country. So that's a huge plus. Um, huge time investment, resource investment, physical investment, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's not easy to do or pull off. And as an out-of-state hunter, you know, success rates are usually pretty low. So you got to be in it for the experience. I mean, you and I saw, like, we went out there and didn't want, I don't think we heard any bugling. So we didn't get any of that. Um, but if you can learn to appreciate the experience for itself, like the journey and all that, then you can, you know, still have fun, even though that special, special, special thing only happens once in a while. Species you have not hunted yet, but is on your bucket list that you want to go hunt. Moose, moose, we do, dude. I would love now explain your hunt. explain your dream moose hunt. So I think the dream moose hunt is a float trip in Alaska. Yes. Yes. Um, so you're seeing new terrain all the time. You're on the water, so you're also fishing a bunch, and then you have the opportunity to you know be encountering bears, be encountering wolves. So I feel like. Th- it's twofold. It's one, I think it's one of your best opportunities to get like a very quintessentially Alaskan adventure. And then also a great way to get a moose, get a moose out of there. You float it out there. Um, so it's, it's the moose and the experience plus the fishing naturally fits into it. I think makes it a, a dream trip. Okay. A lot of episodes on the wired to hunt podcast, name someone who you have interviewed that really resonated with you and and you were just like man that i just love talking with that guy oh man this is hard there's so many um one minute shoot um shit. 50 this, seconds how, how is this the <laughs> hardest one like thinking back um you know i i it, it's cliche um but I always like talking to Mark Drury, like everyone likes Mark Drury, but I just, his brain works the way mine does, like very, Mm. very nerdy, very, uh, a lot of analysis. So even though like his hunting situation is wildly different than mine, like I don't own any of that land. I have none of those resources that he has. Um, I still really relate to his thought process. And so every time we talk, uh, I just feel like I'm talking to like a, a smarter, better deer hunting version of myself, but like we're on the same wavelength. So that resonates. Um, I always enjoy kind of Donnie Vincent's philosophical views on hunting. I always enjoy that. Um, and you, Dan, you and I 
when we vibe in our stupid BS sessions, that <laughs> has for 10 years now been a highlight. Hey, this was good. You only went over and and I won't even say you went over, but the buffer time here is eight second, eight point three three seconds. That's right. pretty good. That's pretty that's, good. I mean, I'm gonna say I had a lot to do with it because of the questions I asked, but your <laughs> answers hit home and they were they were perfect. So that's ladies and gentlemen, that was 10 minutes with Mark Kenyon. All right. I feel like I'm, I'm I wish I had a studio sweating. audience. I, yeah, I wish I had a studio audience. Um, the next version of this podcast, 10, 10 years from now, Dan, when you've made it to the next level of success and you're doing this in front of that big crew or big crowd, yeah. that would be yeah. next level. And so in 10 years, if I ever do have an audience, it's probably going to be at a bar called the Black Squirrel. And there will be like three guys there who were there already. They just happened to hunt <laughs> and they're just like, uh, okay, are these guys? What's, what's going on here? So um yeah. sign me bonus up. bonus question mm -hmm. any plans to change the mustache and go back to a goatee or <laughs> what are we thinking here uh probably not goatee my okay. uh i can say that with strong confidence because my wife like vehemently hates the goatee okay so she basically said if i go back to the goatee uh she's leaving too so okay. i Fair would enough. guess for the short term mustache if i were to change it might be just like barefaced someday. You can't um, do that though. You, you look too young. See, that's what I've always said. And, and so I believe that's the case. <laughs> the rookie wife, of the year comes back. The rookie of the year comes back. My wife seems to think that I have an older face now. She thinks I'm aging okay. and that I could do it. But uh, but I agree with you. So okay. for, for now, the stash will stay. There you go. Mr. Mark Canyon, man, I really appreciate you taking time to do this. And uh, man, we'll talk to you when we talk to you. Yeah, man, it was fun. Thanks for having me. And that's all you need right there. Let me uh, Beautiful. Uh, stop recording here.